right. We'll go ahead. Yeah, some folks were just wondering if we were ready to go. They didn't hear anything. So I think if you can hear us, then we should be good to go ahead and get started on our next session. So with that, we've got three presenters that will be talking to us about 2020 Census and the activities that are going on within the Puget Sound Regional Council area. And we're going to start off uh, first, we'll have Lorraine Ralston, who is a senior partnership specialist that has worked with the Census Bureau since 2018. Then we'll have Steve Steinhauer, our area census office manager, and then Lisa McLean that works for the state. Uh, and with that, though, I'll pass it over to Lorraine, Lorraine, and she'll talk a little bit more about our presenters and what they'll be discussing today. So go ahead, Lorraine. Great. Uh, thank you, Heidi. And um, thank you, Neil and the council for uh, inviting uh, me back to speak with you. Uh, it was, I think it was a little over a year ago that I last had an opportunity to talk to you about our partnership program. So I certainly appreciate the opportunity today. Um, as Lisa, um, as Heidi said, oh, my slide is not advancing. I'm already having technical problems. There we go. Um, as Heidi said, I'm a partnership specialist with the Census Bureau. So my job is outreach to uh, educate people about the census, encourage them to participate. I uh, work in mostly western, southwestern, and central Washington, uh, working with about 18 counties um, throughout the state. I'm being joined today by my colleague, Steve Steinauer. He is the census manager for our Tacoma office. We have five census offices in the uh, state of Washington. These are our operations centers. And Steve manages our Tacoma office and is responsible for all of the operations within Pierce County and Southern King County. So he's gonna talk to us a little bit about our operations moving forward. And then finally, uh, we're being joined by Lisa McLean. I'm sure a lot of you know Lisa. She's with the Office of Management and Budget with the state. And she's our state's census coordinator for the uh, 2020 census. So she's been working with all of the state agencies and partners throughout the state, um, making sure that the funding the state's provided is getting out for grassroots efforts and um, basically just supporting every county throughout the state. So uh, Lisa's gonna talk to you guys a little bit about what the state's been doing to promote the census. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about uh, the census. I think everyone here probably knows why we do it, but if not, um, it is a constitutional requirement. We do the census every 10 years, and um, we're currently in the middle of it now. And um, our job is to make sure that we get a complete count of everyone living in the United States. So um, that's our objective and that's what we've all been working toward for these past few months. So um, what we've been doing so far is um, trying to get people to self-respond to the census, to answer the census on their own. Now our operations have been affected by the COVID-19 virus. Um, we, like everyone else in the country, we're under a stay at home order um, from the middle of March. So a lot of our field operations have been um, suspended for uh, a bit of time. We in partnership have still been working very, very hard to uh, promote the census and educate people about the census, but um, our operations have been uh, definitely affected. And um, the information that we're gonna talk about a little bit this morning uh, and the information that Steve will go into more detail, I just want to note that things are um, very fluid with the census. We do respond to local guidance on health uh, requirements. So uh, we're doing our best to get our operations up and running again, but um, uh, they may be changed or postponed in the future depending on um, requirements for health and safety. So uh, starting on March 12th is when we really kicked off the census. This is when our online portal opened. This is when our phone lines began um, operating. And this is when people could uh, start to answer the census. We call this our self-response phase. We have mailed invitations to about 95% of the country. People who have what we consider a traditional mailing address received an invitation in the mail. 
And we um, have recently completed sending packets to people who don't have traditional mailing addresses. So for example, people who live in more rural communities or who have PO boxes, they received a packet um, on their door. And we've just, uh, uh, we're just finishing up that operation this week in the state of Washington. So by the end of this week, um, everyone uh, in Washington will have been uh, notified and invited to answer the census. Now the, um, the operation where we leave the packets on the doors, we call that update leave. Um, this is an operation where we actually validate where the address is or where the residence is at the same time that we leave an invitation. This mostly affects uh, our more rural communities, as I said, but taking a look at the four counties um, in the Puget Sound Regional Council area, the areas that are more lightly colored, the more pink colors, and it's very hard to see on this map, I'm sorry, um, those are the areas that were affected by this update leave operation. So these operations had been suspended in March. We, we would have done this in March, notifying people in these areas. We did um, suspend that for a bit of time, and we restarted this operation about three weeks ago. So uh, there was very little of it done in Kitsap County, um, and you can see on the map it's mostly the eastern portions of Snohomish, King, and Pierce counties that were affected. Now, as I said, the self-response period uh, began on March 12th, and it will continue until October 31st. So we are encouraging as many people as possible around the country to answer the census on their own, to either go online, uh, call the toll-free number, or return the mailed questionnaire that they may have received at their home. We are encouraging them to do this um, because it actually saves us money. Um, it's very expensive for us to go door to door to collect census information, so the more people who respond in the self-response period, um, the uh, more money we'll save for our operations. We also get more accurate data when people self-respond. Um, and that is definitely one of our objectives is to have complete a complete count, but also an accurate count of the census. I just want to give you a uh, just an idea of where we are in the process. This data is as of May 31st. These are the self-response rates um, that I thought would be of interest. Um, Currently in the United States, across the entire country, about 60.5% of households have answered the census. We, are, uh, we haven't achieved the, the final self-response rate for 2010. That's kind of our, our goal with the self-response, um, but we still have a ways to go. Again, a lot of the United States has been affected by the COVID-19 virus, um, so that's why I think um, the numbers are a little bit higher. Washington State, we're doing phenomenally here in Washington State. Um, we could not be prouder. We are actually ranked number six in the United States for response, and we are the number one state in the Western um, Census Bureau region, the Los Angeles region, which includes the seven Western states. Our response rate's at 65.8%, and we are just under two percentage points of hitting our 2010 rate. So we're very excited about that, and we, we're hoping to hit that within a week or two. King County is doing an amazing job. They are ranked uh, number two within, uh, the, uh, in, within Washington. They've got a 70% rate. They are just a hair under hitting their 2010 rate, which was 70.3%. Uh, we, we hope that they will do that this week. Uh, Kitsap County is knocking it out of the park. They're at 69.3%. Uh, they reached their 2010 rate uh, several weeks ago in early May and uh, they're just doing a phenomenal job there in Kitsap County. Pierce County is at 66%, again, just a touch under hitting their 2010 rate, and they should be hitting that uh, this week, as well as Snohomish County. They are just a fraction under hitting their 2010 rate. So we've got an incredible um, response rate here within the Puget Sound area. Now, uh, just to give you an idea of how our tribal um, friends are doing, we have four, uh, five reservations within those four counties, and you can see the response rates there. Again, the tribes are doing a great job. Um, we have had some um, 
operations that have been suspended on tribal lands. So they are just restarting that. Um, but uh, nonetheless, the tribes are doing a great job. The, this data only reflects actual tribal reservations where we have housing units on the reservation. Does it necessarily reflect all of the people that belong to tribes within the four counties? Now, I think as you guys uh, were looking a little bit earlier at the different census tracts. Um, we do um, look at our data, our response rates, looking at census tracts. So I just wanted to share with you the relevant maps for the different counties. Um, the darker the shades of blue, the higher the response rate. So we are looking to get things very, very dark blue. Here's King County, and you can kind of get a, a quick snapshot of how the response rates are going. Certainly in the more urban areas, we're seeing higher response rates. The um, kind of orangey brown area to the, to the um, east is uh, that area that was affected by update leave. That response rate hasn't been as high as we'd liked, and that's primarily because we haven't been able to deliver invitations to those areas until um, quite recently. So we'll see that um, increasing, we think, very soon. Uh, in Kitsap County, again, you can see Kitsap County is doing a phenomenal job. Um, almost everything is blue. There are just two little areas that are um, uh, falling behind or aren't responding as uh, much as we had hoped, and they are actually the naval base areas. Um, so the response rates on the Navy bases are um, a little bit lower because we have suspended our operations there and we're working with DOD to uh, restart that operation. So other than that, Kitsap County is just doing an amazing job. Pierce County is a similar situation as King County. Everything to the east is um, not responding as high, as high as we'd hoped because they haven't been invited to answer the census until recently. Um, we've got lots of blue in the more urban areas, downtown uh, Tacoma area, uh, moving out onto the Kitsap Peninsula. Um, that very, very dark brown area to the um, bottom left is JBLM. Again, that, is got, uh, that has a low response rate because we have suspended operations there for the, for the time being. So uh, we'll be working with DOD to count people on the, the military base. And then finally, Snohomish County, similar story. Everything to the east um, has a lower response rate. Um, and we do expect to start seeing those numbers inching up now that people have uh, received their census invitations. So um, as I said uh, at the beginning, my job is outreach. It's uh, educating people and encouraging them to answer the census. And one of the reasons I think that the four counties that we're looking at today are doing so well is because we have an incredible amount of support within those counties for the 2020 census. Each one of those counties has a complete count committee. Those are volunteer groups that have come together um, under the auspices of the county to, uh, to do outreach and help people answer the census and um, reach populations of people that are going to be a little bit harder to count. Uh, five of the seven tribes that we have within these four counties have also established their own complete count committees. So we're seeing a lot of support within the tribal community in these four counties. We have an incredible amount of local support at all levels of government within these four counties. We have had county commissioners and mayors um, going out in the public and encouraging people to answer the census and, and really getting engaged with their constituencies to explain why the census is important to their, um, to their communities. And um, we have hundreds upon hundreds of very engaged community organizations throughout all four of these counties that have been working very hard to promote the census. Um, including in these past uh, three months when everyone has been um, staying at home. They've done a lot of virtual outreach or outreach at the food distribution centers um, to help people answer the census. And I think all of these things combined is reflected in the high response rates that we are seeing within these four counties. All four of these counties are within the top five um, across um, all of the 39 counties within Washington. 
So as far as the Census Bureau itself, what have we been doing um, since March 12th when we basically uh, started uh, staying at home and working from home? Um, we haven't stopped our outreach within the state of Washington. We've been working very hard to stay engaged with our partners and encourage people to participate in the census, but we've had to do this in a very different way because um, we haven't been able to have all of the census events that we had originally planned on having. One of the big initiatives that we've been working on is reaching out to every house of worship throughout the state of Washington. We've already identified more than 6,000 of them and uh, engaging with the faith-based leaders to encourage their congregations and reach out to their congregations asking people to answer the census. We um, did a series of webinars in um, April along with one of our partners, Washington Nonprofits, talking about different various um, operations within the census and brainstorming for ideas of how people can get engaged and, and reach out. Um, we've been sending a weekly uh, update to our partners throughout the state of Washington. Uh, we have more than 10,000 partners that are working with us across the state, and we've been staying in touch with them, giving them important updates about how our operations have been affected by the virus and um, what we're doing to overcome that. On um, April 1st and um, in May, we did a social media blitz uh, in collaboration with the rest of the United States where we engaged with as many groups as possible to, to blitz every social media platform. I believe on our most recent blitz, we saw almost a 3% bump in response rates over the course of a four-day weekend, which was very, very exciting. And uh, one thing that we're getting uh, gearing up to start on Monday is outreach um, to rural communities, specifically the 10 counties in Washington that are sort of um, um, at the bottom of the list with self-response rates. These are mostly our rural counties. Um, where we have only recently been inviting people to answer the census, and we are working with um, organizations that provide services in those, uh, those counties to get those numbers bumped up. Now, just to give you a flavor of some of the things that we have been doing, some of the outreach that we've been doing, this is um, oh, just an example of something from King County. Uh, one of our partners, City of Renton, worked with a group to have a drive-through census lunch where they provided 300 um, uh, vehicles uh, free tacos during the day and helped them answer the census. This, this event was just uh, last week. It was a huge success um, and um, really reached into the Hispanic community in the area to encourage them to answer the census. Kitsap County has been doing lots of great events. Um, the NAACP in Bremerton created this flyer on the uh, right-hand side, which provided a lot of really good information about COVID-19 and staying healthy and how people can get services within the county, but it also um, talked about how important the census was. And we've had some outreach with the, um, the school kids that are getting um, uh, daycare services, uh, children of the first responders are getting dropped off at daycare centers and they've done some census events for the kids. They did census trivia and the kids got t-shirts that uh, talk about how exciting the census is and that everybody needs to be counted. Pierce County has um, put signage on the buses, Pierce Transit buses, and also in uh, the bus shelters throughout the area promoting the census. Um, originally, I think all of the signage was supposed to be up for about a month. They've extended that um, through uh, into July now. So uh, as more and more people are getting out in the community, they'll get to see more of these materials with the buses and um, bus shelters around Pierce County. And then Snohomish County, just a couple of weeks ago, or earlier in May, they did a great event where they partnered with 14 restaurants to offer um, free lunches and promoting the census. Um, it was a great community partnership. It drove uh, attention to the business community, the restaurant community, and um, really worked very well um, with the uh, getting census uh, responses in the community. It was a great event and um, really reached a lot of people in a hard to count community in Snohomish County. And not to be outdone, our tribal communities have also been very, very busy doing virtual outreach. 
Um, the Puyallup tribe had a huge section in the, the uh, tribal newspaper about the census. There's been raffles um, at the Port uh, Gamble Sklalem tribe. They did a fabulous raffle for people who answered the census. Um, there's been podcasts out about how the census affects some important programs to the tribal community. And then uh, this lovely billboard here on the right um, with Mount Rainier, that is uh, up at the Emerald Queen Casino now um, in Pierce County. So um, if you get to drive down I-5, you should be able to see that beautiful billboard promoting the census. So um, I don't only want to talk to you a little bit about the census and um, what we've been doing, but I also want to leave you with a quick thought about what you can do to help the 2020 census. Um, first of all, I hope everyone that's on the call today has actually answered the census already. Um, if you haven't, I please uh, ask you to do that today. Uh, please self-respond if you haven't done that already. And I challenge you to encourage 20 other people to self-respond as well, whether it's family members or colleagues of yours or, or people you know in your community or in your church or in community organizations. If you can encourage other people to answer the census, it will go a long way to getting a full count. Um, most people respond very well to personal requests to do something as opposed to getting a name, nameless email or something. Um, if you're with an organization and you have employees or customers or clients or distributors or, or business members or whatever, um, if you can send an email out and encourage everyone within your network to answer the census now and use your social media, whether it's through your organization, through your or, um, or your personal social media. Again, just to an, um, encourage everyone to answer the census now. The little tip that I like to tell people is if you don't want someone to come ringing on your doorbell, you don't want somebody on your property, just please answer the census and the Bureau will not come uh, bothering you at any time. Um, so that's it for me. I think what we're going to do is hold off on questions until the end. So what I'd like to do now is uh, turn the presentation over to my colleague Steve, who's going to give you a bit of an overview of what we're going to be doing moving forward. Thank you, Lorraine. Can you guys hear me okay? Thank you, Lorraine. Can you guys hear me okay? I can I can hear you, Steve. I'm gonna mute okay, my good. audio now. Very good. Thank you. Um uh, I am uh, Steve Steinauer. I'm the area census office manager for the Tacoma office. And as Lorraine said, um that covers all of Pierce County and the very southern tip of King County. And I am going to discuss our operational updates with you. Um as Lorraine said, I just wanted to make it it clear, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here. Um, operations may continue to adjust. Um, we are working with uh, state and county guidelines as well as following CDC guidelines. Um, we've had things change on a dime, um, as I'll explain in a little bit. Um, our key to success has been flexibility. Um, so we're going to just have to uh, do the best we can. We're, we've taken the work stoppage seven weeks um, and have, have created many contingency plans within our office uh, to be ready for any kind of situation. And I'll update you as we go along for each operation. Um, but I wanna let people know that things will continue to change uh, as we adjust to uh, COVID-19. So update leave, as Lorraine said, is very nearly completed. Um, we, we nationwide dropped off 5 million uh, door hangers with informational uh, census material for people to fill out for their residences. This is for residents that don't have a traditional mailing address or they don't get mail. Um, we have a lot of people, for instance, on our islands, the San Juan Islands, um, and some of our islands here in uh, uh, South Puget Sound area. Um, so we started this early. We were supposed to start uh, June 1st, and uh, our census HQ went to Governor Inslee with a proposal and said, uh, we can do update leave in a non-contact way by leaving uh, pamphlets on somebody's doorknob and we will not see anybody and we can do this in a very safe way wearing PPE and he agreed. So we actually started uh, back up about three weeks ago and we're very nearly complete. 
as I understand it, speaking with my supervisor, uh, Western Washington is probably about 95% done. Um, the San Juan Islands are actually being enumerated this week. Um, that involved a series of renting boats and uh, procuring staff that can work uh, long, long hours to get this done. But I expect that we will be done this week on update leave. So that is one operation down. We are also currently working on general quarters. We call it GQ. This is the counting of people in facilities such as nursing homes, hospitals, uh, student housing, barracks like JBLM um, and federal prisons, state prisons, et cetera. Um, this was supposed to be something where we sent out enumerators to each individual locality and interviewed them in person. Obviously with COVID-19 that went out and after reevaluating the operation, we went to uh, no in-person contact and we were in we have been encouraging people uh, to respond through e-response and paper mail-in response. So we've been calling, um, gosh, in our region, I think it's about 1,900 different GQ locations and walking them through the e-response um, process or helping them with the mail-in process. We're not quite done. We do have in-person interviews, if they're required, scheduled for July 1st through September 3rd. That is subject to change. Ideally, it would be great if every GQ would uh, follow either e-response or paper mail-in response, and, and then we could be done. This is currently ongoing um, through phone only. We are not doing any kind of in-person contact. That could change um, uh, if, if health conditions allow as of July 1st. Uh, I have special instructions regarding uh, colleges and universities. Uh, we've been asked to go back and count college students as if the COVID-19 uh, pandemic had not happened. And I wish we could rub a lamp and make that happen. Um, but unfortunately, we can't. So what we're asking housing officials to do is count students where they normally would have lived during the school year. So wherever they lived on their dormitory, um, they should be counted as, as if they were there on April 1st. If uh, students lived off campus with, say, roommates in a separate residence, they would count that residence as a separate residence and enumerate themselves, um, roommates included. If a student is normally living at home with mom and dad uh, during their school year, they should be counted as part of their family. So I hope that is not too convoluted. If, if not, we'll be happy to take questions. Also, for students studying abroad, uh, wherever you normally would have been living full-time or most of the time during April 1st, that's where that student should be counted. Um, for more information, there are some good videos, very short instructional videos. You can go to 2020census.gov forward slash grads. There are lots of instructional videos and informative uh, tidbits for people to look up. So just in case I didn't explain it correctly here, uh, use that as a resource, and I'll be happy to take questions after. Um, we're moving into our non-response follow-up. This is kind of the big, big finale of the census. Um, this is when we go to anyone who has not self-responded or anyone who is not part of our update leave uh, or our transitory location. I'll explain that a bit. But anybody who is not uh, otherwise reported themselves will get a door-to-door -door interview. Now, this is going to be tricky. We're um, updating our enumeration process uh, to follow social distancing. We'll be wearing PPE. Um, we had planned on doing classroom training for several thousand employees per office uh, to go out into the community and enumerate. We're having to reevaluate that now. Um, we will be spending very minimal face time with incoming employees. We will issue them an iPhone for enumeration. We will take their uh, identification data um, and we will swear them in as all federal employees are sworn in within the first five minutes of your, of your employment. Um, after that, trainees will be sent home and they will complete training via a series of online classes and also um, instructional webinars that will be hosted from our regional office in Los Angeles. This is ongoing. They are developing this as we go. Um, we are currently recruiting employees still for this um, operation. We had hired, or excuse me, we had selected for hire about 2,000, 2, 2,300, I believe, uh, persons for hire. 
uh, before the work stoppage. So we're going back and we're touching base with those people to make sure that they're still interested in uh, working with us. And we are continuing to select uh, new applicants from the field. So uh, I'll remind you at the end of the, my presentation, we are still hiring. Um, for this, this non-response follow-up operation, it is going to be very tricky. Um, we are going to have to knock on someone's door. We will have to do a face-to-face -face interview. We're going to have to maintain six to eight feet of separation. Um, it is going to be a different, more clunky process, but we want to keep people safe. Um, our employees and the, the residents, uh, are, their safety is our top priority. So this may be developing more as we go, but that's what I have on this right now. Um, we have been delayed or, or postponed rather. Um, we were due to start here uh, late June. We're actually going to be starting August 11th and it will run through Halloween. Um, dates, as I said before, may be adjusted in response to the health crisis. So that's where we're at right now with non-response follow-up. Uh, to be determined, we have some operations that are pending. Um, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea uh, and misconstrue this as we're not going to be completing these operations. We definitely will be completing them. We are just right now formulating the best practices to keep our staff and the citizenry safe. So we're looking at dates, we're looking at different enumeration methods that will keep everybody safe. And right now, transitory locations where we would be counting people who lived in RV parks or campgrounds, marinas, hotels, et cetera, circuses and the fair would fall into that as well. Um, with the Washington State Fair, we have people that are transitory. That's been rescheduled for uh, September 3rd and should run the almost the entire month of September. Um, it's pending. The date could change. Um, the method of enumeration may change, but um, right now that's the most up-to-date information I have on that right now. Um, also very, very crucial is counting persons experiencing homelessness. Um, we should have completed this uh, April 29th, um, and this is a basically a, an overnight operation where we go out into the community and we're, we're counting people. Um, this has been suspended right now and not canceled. I want to be clear. It's just under review right now. We, we've suspended the operation or postponed it rather until we can come up with the best practices to keep um, our staff and citizenry safe. Um, the last update that I had on this, um, we were going to go out into the community and basically count noses. You can't interview people when they're living in encampments or they're sleeping in a car or they're asleep uh, in a doorway. We're, we're not going to wake people. We're not going to disturb people. But we are going to count a person, um, one person, two person. If we have an opportunity to interview at so safe social distance, uh, then we will do that. But these things are being updated uh, in response to the COVID-19 crisis, and a date and method of enumeration will be uh, coming soon is my expectation. Uh, mobile questionnaire assistance was a, a great plan, and we had planned to send out um, census representatives from each office into the community, especially into low response areas. Um, the, uh, Lorraine had mentioned the, the free breakfast, the free tacos, and the, those programs going into underrepresented or low response areas. We were going to assist that with people who had devices um, and walk them through the process of self-response. Um, that required sharing a device. It required close personal contact as people explained the process. So that is under review right now due to social distancing requirements. Um, I hope that we are able to roll this out. It is a great idea, and it was, it was something that was added on at the last minute, and we were all very excited about it. Um, and right now it's, it's under review due to the, the COVID-19 process. So Back to self-response, um, I wanted to remind everybody, as Lorraine did, that we are uh, doing self-response through October 31st. Uh, we have extended this program to allow people to get on the computer or call the toll-free number or respond by mail um, so that I, I'm going to be blunt about this. If you self-report, then we don't have to come and knock on your door and disturb you. So um, we're, we're going to push this. And now, the programs that I mentioned earlier, the update leave where we have left something at your door or transitory leave or transitory uh, locations. If you live on a boat in a marina or you live um, uh, in a campground, please wait. 
wait until we contact you um, before you self respond. That's the that's the advice that we would give to people, um, and that likewise would go for students who are otherwise would have been living on campus because um, you would have been enumerated through general quarters. If you have questions on that, let me know at the end. But I just want to keep it in everyone's mind that we um, we're supporting self response and we want it to be very very successful. Um, the census is still hiring, as I mentioned, uh, 2020census.gov forward slash jobs. Um, 40 million people across the nation right now are currently um, filing for unemployment. We do have temporary work. Um, we would love everyone to apply and, and get involved in their community. Uh, in most, instance, most instances, field workers are able to work very close to their home. Um, they still would need a car. They would need to be available for up to 20 hours per week. But in most cases, we try to hire people geographically so that they can work in neighborhoods that they're familiar with, neighborhoods where they may know people, uh, neighborhoods where they know how to navigate the terrain and do the best job for the census. So we are still hiring. I want to let everybody know. and Please tell someone if, if they're um, at home not working, we're, we're going to try and help them. Uh, note again, uh, these things are, it's a very fluid process right now. Um, it is uh, a moving target as we try to adjust to um, all the public health developments. Um, we're, we're taking guidance from multiple levels of government, and um, we want to make sure that we keep, it, keep everyone safe. So um, these dates could change. The method of enumeration could change. I just want to let everybody know that that is unfortunately part of the ball game right now, and we're just doing the best we can. Uh, to be flexible and alert for those changes. So, uh, Lorraine, that's going to conclude what I have here, and I'll be happy to uh, take questions from anyone. Uh, at the conclusion, I'll stick around on the line, and I'll send this back to you guys. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Steve. There was a question about um, homelessness and the point in time count. Um, we can wait um, till the end. Um, Lisa, are you uh, ready to start your presentation? Okay, sorry guys. I was trying to figure out how to under unmute myself. Can you see my screen? Oh, I, I can see it, Lisa. Now I can hear you too. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. This is weird the way this. I hope this is going to work. Okay. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, it's kind of weird talking to my screen without being able to see everybody. <laughs> but, um, so, and somehow my screen advanced before I was ready for it too. But I wanted to just. Um, my presentation is going to basically maybe give you an overview of the things that we've been doing. Um, in the past two years, three years, um, in order to uh, prepare for this census, um, and especially about how we spent the money, and especially how we spent the money in the Puget Sound region uh, area. So the foundation of our um, of our uh, I'm trying sorry I'm just trying to move this here. Okay, the foundation. Um, of our funding was that basically we, we started out with the fact that we knew that we wanted to get the address file right and make sure that the Census Bureau had the greatest address file in the world. So that was always where we began. Then we also understood that a full and accurate count was going to depend upon focusing on positive messages about the resources and the political representation. That was going to be key. That another key thing was going to be that the positive messages would be delivered by trusted messengers, people who are of the community. And um, <clears throat> that historically undercounted populations are identifiable and they're going to require some extra effort. And we also, in thinking about money, we, we could have thought about money, get, distributing money in a geographic way or just uh, uh, distributing money demographically, as in to the Asian populations, the Hispanic populations, this type of thing. Um, <clears throat> and what we did is we kind of combined those two things. There, we, we had looked at California, which basically spent most of their money. They, they went like 80% of their money was geographically distributed and 20% was demographically distributed. And we looked at our own state and said, actually, if you're really thinking that way in our own state, you'd actually look at it as, a, as opposite. It would be demographically, probably better to distribute it demographically and less so geographically. So you'll see that sort of in our thinking when you look at what we did with the money. 
Um, we also understood that self-response was the most efficient, most accurate, and lowest cost, and um, least invasive data collection method, and so we wanted to encourage that. I'm going to try to advance the slide, but I'm not really sure why I don't know how to do this. Oh, there, okay, okay. So there was a, a legislative proviso um, in the first fiscal year 2018 to 2019 where they put together about $450,000. That was able for them to hire me and another person half time. As I said, we were really concentrated on the addresses, so we also invested a lot of money in um, helping to uh, in the Luca process, which was um, an effort to um, correct the addresses and get the correct addresses to the Census Bureau. And we also had a small two hundred thousand dollar fund that was administered by the Department of Com uh, Department of Commerce um, that gave out eight community contracts which at least it began to lay the foundation of the work that we did, uh, that we've done in the last year. So um, it was able to, for a lot of you will probably probably be aware of the Washington Nonprofits Toolkit, um, where they really produced um, in, with that first money, the kind of the outlines of their posters and their handouts and everything. Um, other people developed some training materials, organizations like Opportunity Council up in Bellingham were able to sort of create some relationships and foundations. Well, um, foundational groups in Island and San Juan and Whatcom and Skagit County, and they were now are building on that with, in their work right now. And then um, for this fiscal year, this, these fiscal years right now that we're in right now, the legislature appropriated $15.159 million for an outreach and communications uh, campaign that especially targets the historically undercounted. The interesting thing about this money is that 15 million of that money was part of the FY 2020 because of the fact, and then there was 159,000 that was made available for FY 2021 because, of course, we all thought that this was going to be over by July 31st. And so it was $15 million up until June 30th of 2020, and then you can have another $159,000 for last rapid response activities. So, in other words, <clears throat> the money's coming to an end. <clears throat> so how did we how have we distributed this money? The money's been distributed. First, we started out with an RFP uh, to a competitive RFP for community con contracts. Um, any nonprofit and cities and uh, counties could apply. Um, and we distributed about seven point five million dollars through that process, and that included about eight hundred thousand to the tribes. Later on in December. Um, we started, some people contacted us and wanted to increase, uh, to, had some ideas about how to increase their uh, activities. And so we probably gave out another 2.2 million uh, through that process. And that included some more money for uh, some of the tribes uh, working through the Naha Elihi Fund. And then we also kind of, we didn't have too many cities and counties who had applied through the community contracts process. At least they hadn't applied successfully. So we actually sort of created this fund to make it very easy for cities, counties, and libraries to apply. And we put $2 million into that fund. And then on media, we, through the community contracts, we had bought some media, but we did make an agreement with the Washington State Association of Broadcasters. You might've seen some of the ads that are on television, but it's also radio and digital. And then we also gave $100,000 to the city of Seattle who ran a competitive thing for uh, ethnic uh, and minority media. And um, and then we had a half million for state-sponsored promotional materials, which I'll uh, get to. They're still available if anybody needs them. <laughs> There's lots of them. And then we kind of thought, well, okay, we'll kind of keep $2.3 million aside and um, figure out what to do with that a little bit later after we start, uh, after the portal opens up and we start to see what their self-response rates are. And of course, when the portal opened up, um, that's when everything shut down. So then we actually had our real proviso, which is our, what I'm calling my post-pandemic 2020 proviso. At the end of the day, we're coming to the end of spending. I think I, I'm right after this call, I'm gonna probably deal with my last amendment. Um, and we will have spent all of the $15 million. About 10, 10 and a half million has gone into the community contracts, which includes about a million to the tribes. Um, we and cities and counties and libraries surprisingly did not apply that there were not they, there were not that many applications but we did end up giving out about a million dollars and that included in within uh, the 
P PSRC's region. Um, that includes Bellevue, Issaquah, Kent, Lakewood, Redmond, Redmond Seattle, and Shoreline. We also gave uh, money to regional libraries, including Pierce County Rural Libraries and Snow Isle Libraries. Because of the pandemic, we obviously, we really doubled down on the media. Um, and that actually is, as I said, that there was a community contract called Pier, um, United Way of King County. Uh, within that pyramid, uh, communications was doing some of the media with them. So we actually did a huge build out of media with them uh, recently. And they're actually gonna be able to do, to keep the campaign going after our money runs out on June 30th. Um, so they're gonna, they're kind of pre um, doing their ads and everything and placing them and buying them uh, by the end of the month. Uh, so you will continue to see some of the advertising and the uh, social media activities even after um, our money runs out. And then our state sponsored promotional materials remained 500,000. <clears> So who are the major partners in the Puget Sound region? You've probably heard about the Washington Census Alliance. It's probably one of the largest ones. <clears throat> it's a kind of coalition working across the state with about 64 organizations led by these three um, organizations that I have here, Latino Community Foundation, Progress Fund, and Naha Elihi Foundation. E each one of them gets a kind of third of the pot. Then another big partner, as I mentioned just earlier, is United Way of King County um, and Pyramid Communications, who has been doing, as you might have seen some of their wild postering, it's actually being used a lot in like articles in the New York Times and NPR. Um, so we even get uh, further um, uh, use of that of the, that stuff there. Um, and that also includes the Urban League of uh, Metropolitan Seattle. Greater Tacoma Community Foundation, they've given out uh, over 40 grants uh, to do a heck of a lot of great work um, uh, there. And same thing with the Kitsap Community Foundation has given out at least 12 grants. We actually did a increase to their grant. So I think they might, either they've given more money to the same groups or they've uh, given out money to new groups. And then up in Sonohomish, it's the Communities of Color Coalition, C3. Um, and they're working with over 10 organizations up there and um, stuff. The other partners uh, are listed here. Um, you know, Washington Nonprofits continues to be a partner, continues to produce some great uh, toolkits, toolkit materials um, that really, and actually also working with uh, rural organizations, um, really important in some of those low, uh, low response counties that we, we see they're really working a lot and putting a lot of effort into trying to get the word out in those communities. Black Lives Matter and Leggett is done some great stuff with, um, um, it, with the black media um, that's been very important. Um, and uh, all the other organizations listed here have been doing some great stuff. Sorry, my phone didn't. Um, so there's that. So what are the activities? I mean, as uh, Lorraine showed you, and I'm gonna show you also, um, they, the money we've been able to give out has been able to fund things like transit, um, signs on, on buses, um, banners. Uh, we have produced a ton of banners and we're handing them out. We just started producing them in Spanish and anybody's willing to have that. Billboards, the tribes have been doing these billboards, which is really great. Not just the Puyallup, but also Cowlitz. Um, social media, everybody's with this, with the pandemic, everybody's using social media, lots of Facebook live events, lots of boosting of ads, posting of videos on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Radio and television through, you know, minority and ethnic uh, media. There's been some good podcasts that have been done. Um, there, in fact, there's actually the, the Commission on Hispanic Affairs is running a weekly podcast met from, start, they started about three weeks ago. Um, and so that that's great stuff. And then a lot of really in, in, um, unique ideas being thought about in terms of piggybacking onto COVID relief efforts, either the drive-through events, the takeout orders, um, competition for gift cards, you know, really targeting our, if our populations that are sometimes hardest to count are those low income, these types of competitions where you're giving out a gift card to Safeway is I think really, uh, really um, welcome. There's, there, people are doing mailers um, out to communities, to PO boxes, um, and I'll show you a couple of examples of that. And then there's been messaging toolkits, um, like some people put together these COVID uh, toolkits to 
help marry up the message of fill out the census because it's never been more evident of how important correct census data is to our being able to respond in the, in the course of a pandemic. They organized a, a big social media day on May 1 uh, to highlight uh, Essential Workers Day. Um, they're working right now to uh, prepare a big, big um, the week of Juneteenth um, to prepare a big social media uh, blitz on that. Um, people are texting and phone banking, organizing challenges and competition, and generally trying to consider, think about where people are convening these days and how they can um, how they can take advantage of that. I think one of the greatest probably ideas was uh, that's now being replicated by other people is the idea of uh, producing masks that uh, have Census 2020 on them and Census 2020 reminders on them. So that's a great uh, thing. The other thing I think is that what Tacoma says and Greater Tacoma Community Foundation has sort of focused on, I think is a great one, is to, to think about positively, not to find the people who haven't answered the census, but rather to think about somebody who has answered the census and have that person call five friends or family uh, and explain to them why it's so important to do the census. So those of us who have already done it recognize how important it is, and we can explain to other people why it's really important to be done in a positive, keeping the message positive as we can say. So here are my little pictures. I wanted to show you some, these are our banners that we have available. This, the low, picture in the lower right corner is in Arlington, the city of Arlington, and the uh, other, the one that's being held up is in, in North Seattle. As Lorraine pointed out, there's the, the Puyallup um, billboard and also the Cowlitz uh, Indian tribe billboard is, um, I'm showing you. Then we have uh, transit, that's the, the bus in Tacoma. And also this is for Bellingham. I know that's outside your region, but I like that bus in Bellingham. And then these are some of the mailers. A lot of these are from um, Pierce County. Um, you can see the, the, these are mailers that went out either to uh, rural areas or even um, in, inside the, in non-rural areas. And I put there one that's from Clallam County. And then drive-through events, um, there's a, the Renton drive-through event is, is pictured there and the um, Commission on Hispanic Affairs working with the Central Latino uh, did this great Easter uh, drive-through event. They'd already ordered the eggs before the pandemic. And so they kept, they maintained the event. They just did it at the drive-through um, where they were able to set uh, um, include information about the census and the like. And I just wanted to remind you all that I do have promotional materials from the state, which look something like this. You can order them on our website at that place where I have the arrow there. And um, it, like I said, because we kind of have to stop things. So we actually have a warehouse full of stuff. So if people are looking for more posters, um, pens, decals, um, car decals, um, all that stuff, we still have that stuff available. And I'm really worried that everything kind of, because we all shut down, it's just gonna go to waste. So if anybody needs a banner, a poster, a flyer, um, pens, decals, uh, please go to send me an email or um, contact me. Um, and then the other thing I just wanna remind you on, on our website, you can find some banners for social media that are in our, with our theme. And you can also find our logo for um, our Walk House 2020 logo. So that's all I have to say. I will stop sharing now. Uh, great, thanks so much for that, Lisa. It's always good seeing all those great examples. Um, if anyone has any questions, I know we're, we're getting close to the end of the time, but if anyone has any questions, I, um, please feel free to ask. Um, I think Steve has already answered the question about the point in time count and homelessness, but if anyone else has any questions for Lisa, Steve, or myself, uh, feel free. Okay, well, I don't see anything in the chat box. Um, Heidi, are you back on? Heidi's been having some audio problems. Um, are you back online, Heidi, where you can hear? Yeah, I'm back online. Oh, and um, <laughs> and I was trying to see if anybody had raised a hand, if there was anybody that had a question verbally. But I don't see anything. Okay. 
So, uh, Lorraine, uh, one of the things I guess we just mentioned that hopefully everybody knows, and I don't know if it was in your, I'm trying to remember if it was in your slide, but those, hopefully everybody knows about our, the response tool, if they want to go up and see how. Uh, yep, you know what, you're absolutely right. I didn't actually put that in the presentation, but um, all of the data that we have on the self-response rates, um, that is public information. It is on the 2020census.gov website. Um, you can go in at any time and search for the state, the county, the city, the census tract level to see um, how many households have answered. Um, in fact, I am just, it, our data gets updated about noon every day and they've just updated the information for yesterday, June 5th. First, and I was just doing it. So um, Heidi was, Hyun was asking, uh, King County's now moved up to 70.1%. Uh, so that was good to see, but um, yes, anyone can go online and look at that data at any time. Okay, fact, great, I will yeah. put the uh, address in the chat box. Oh, thanks, Lorraine. Yeah, thought we just mentioned that. So if people haven't checked it out, they should go up and check it out to keep an eye on things. And pass along that information to people too, to let them know that there's a site that they can keep an eye on how a response is looking. Absolutely, we've got quite a lot of counties that have issued challenges, uh, friendly challenges to each other. We've got some cities that have challenged each other to see which, uh, which municipality can get the higher rates. So uh, lots of people are looking at this information every day. Okay, well, I'm not seeing, I don't think I'm seeing anything else coming in, Kristen. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't this, seen anything come in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is Neil, uh, and um, if there's no more questions, I wanna thank everybody, everybody from the census and um, uh, Alisa from Washington Counts for your um, participation today. And again, we will have uh, this recording and the presentations available for download on our website uh, in a few days. Yes, and thank you to uh, the Puget Sound Regional Council for hosting all of us to be able to share with you. Okay, thanks everybody. And this concludes our workshop.